Hey y'all, this is Jenna Sears, your favorite North Texas realtor, and this is Come Home with Jenna. Today, we are gonna hop right into it. We have my sweet friend, who's also an attorney, Paula Hester here with us today. Hi, Miss Paula. Hi, Jenna. <laughs> Not many people call me sweet as a lawyer. <laughs> well, you know. That's so nice. <laughs> you're so welcome. That's so nice. <laughs> I try to flatter everyone on the front end. <laughs> It's a good strategy. I love it. So Paula has been an attorney for 25 plus years, and she has spent most of that time with Fidelity National Title. So we will have another fun and exciting episode on title and why they are crucial to your home buying process. But this is not that. <laughs> so let's pop into how did you get to be an attorney? Why? <laughs> yeah, I never wanted to be a lawyer, and I guess I'm real. I mean, I am a lawyer. I obviously passed the bar and have a license, so that makes me a lawyer. Yes, I, I don't step foot in the courthouse and haven't for many, many, many years, as my real lawyer friends like to point out. <laughs> rude. Uh, yeah, rude. <laughs> yes, totally. Uh, but I found a place at in the real estate segment with a title insurance company. I had four kids, and so it's not really, it's not easy to be a, a litigation attorney with four yeah. children at home, and, and there's a big gap between, you know, two or older, two or younger. But what I really wanted in the very beginning was I wanted a doctor's degree. I was a sociology yeah. major. I, I, I thought about at one point being a jury consultant because I love, I love what groups of people do. I love the study of groups of people. And I thought I, I thought that would be a great path for me and my first husband, who's, who's now passed away, but convinced me that a law degree was the fastest way to a doctor's degree. But nobody calls you doctor. I so know. I, I was feel just like, going to ask you if yeah, I should be I, called. I mean, I, I could. You are a JD. I know. So. I know. But it's not <laughs> customary. So I, I do not. I do not. <laughs> yes. I, I, I did have someone ask me the day, I mean, are you actually a real lawyer or do you just have a JD? And I'm like, ouch. I'm actually board certified by the state. So, <laughs> yes, I am a real lawyer. <laughs> yes. But I that's how. So we, my first experience having you teach a class, which is something that you do for all of us real estate agents, you were talking a little bit about this antitrust lawsuit that is, well, at the time we were in the middle of the lawsuit. We were. The first one. And I just, I loved how clearly you explained it and you made it very simple. So first and foremost, y'all know I'm with Remax. We settled for fifty-five million. Yeah, plug for Remax. Yes, plug, looking, plug for looking me. like the smartest people in the <laughs> room for mean. sure, right? <laughs> uh, hindsight's twenty-twenty, but yeah, Remax. You know, in the last uh, couple of weeks since the verdict came out, there really hasn't been a whole lot of conversation. We've had a couple. We've had some things today and yesterday that have come out. Uh, we've had a couple of copycat lawsuits, mm -hmm. but really, I've, I've kind of chuckled because about the only thing we've been really getting on Sitzer Burnett that just went to trial was the Remax kind of statement of, yeah, we're real happy with our settlement. So, yes. of course they are. That's, yeah, the, that's my official. Yeah, no. <laughs> These are my feelings. You, you got to be pretty happy if <laughs> yeah. you're a Remax agent, for sure. No one's coming after me. Yeah. <laughs> Which is great. You're good. We'll take it. Okay, so uh, first and foremost, tell all of the people what is antitrust what is an antitrust lawsuit what what does that yeah. mean it, and i think this is interesting because as we talked about in the class that price fixing is what you know the sherman antitrust act a federal law that prohibits basically to to kind of water it down uh, price fixing right you know and in no most monopolies. people yeah no monopolies and and what you normally think about of uh, you know when you're talking about price fixing is uh, the example i've always used is you and i each own a bakery and we set prices for how much we're going to charge cupcakes and anybody that comes into our little town to open up a bakery we make them in our group and we make them charge five dollars for cupcakes that's not really what's happening here so that part i think is a little confusing mm -hmm for realtors as well as you know for the average consumer the the main complaint I mean there's a little more to it than that but the main complaint is the offer of compensation through MLS and is there really an opportunity for buyers to negotiate directly with their buyer's agent on the amount of commission they're going to pay and are sellers really able to freely negotiate their commission with listing agents freely and directly like you would any other product or service that you pay for absolutely so that's the that's really the nuts and bolts of it you know the plaintiffs uh I, i've asked a lot of people what do you think the plaintiffs want and everyone says money well i mean attorneys want money you know tell, they, tell us what the average and they did win that first they case. did win sitzer burnett did win tell us what 
amount of money each of them would be entitled to in this class action suit? Yeah, I'd have to do the math because I'm not sure how much the attorneys are going to get. The jury awarded the class of 500,000 home sellers $1.785 billion. Now, the defense has made a motion to have that reduced. The court's not going to review that motion until the first after the first of the year, so it's probably going to be a little later before we find out on that uh, motion because we'll, obviously the, the uh, plaintiffs will have a chance to respond right. once the defense files that motion. A at that point, we probably we'll see treble damages, and if the verdict stands as is with no reduction and we, we and the damages are trebled, then it's going to be $5.36 billion. You know, take, take with a B, y'all. With a B, <laughs> with billion B. with the B. And if you take the attorney's fees off the top, I'm thinking it comes somewhere around ten thousand dollars or so. Which maybe is maybe huge less than that. Because it's, it's no huge. one's getting rich it's off huge. of this. Is Nobody's I getting think rich. The first no. thing I want all my clients yeah. to understand when they're asking these questions yeah. is, yeah, it is a large class. And and from my perspective, I don't feel that anybody it's certainly no one did anything nefarious right. you're talking yes. about an mls system of paying compensation from one agent to the other that's been in place for years yes. and years and years remax didn't do anything wrong or more wrong if you will right. than keller williams like sure. no one did anything specifically uh, harmful of their individual. It was no one agent that did anything wrong. It's a really a system that's sort of on trial. Yes. Yeah, there's some other, you know, stuff that you see in the headlines that are that are a little interesting about training materials and that kind of stuff. But ultimately, bottom line of it is, sh should we change the, the MLS system? Should listing agents no longer pay the commissions directly to the buyer's agent? And should it be a more direct listing agent to seller, buyer's agent to buyer? And just Pretty easy. to bring everybody up to speed on if you've never bought or sold a house, when I go in as a listing agent and I am explaining and walking through my listing agreement with my client, there is a percentage that I will essentially charge for my fees. And from that percentage, I get a part of that and then the buyer's agent would get a part of that. And in order for me as a realtor, and keep in mind, a realtor is owned by NAR, NAR, and you can be a real estate agent, but not be a realtor, but you will most likely be a realtor because you want MLS access. And as the listing agent, I will put the listing onto the MLS that then goes forward to all of the other websites that use IDX, and that is how the public can search for houses. The MLS requires that as a listing agent, I have a compensation value listed for that buyer's agent. So that is what we're kind of talking about yes. here. And the argument from the plaintiffs uh, in that case, as well as the copycat cases, is that if we pulled commission completely out of MLS, there was no offer of compensation in MLS, then there would be no bias from a buyer's agent and showing a property that offered a certain amount of compensation. You know, NAR did come out and and change the system a little bit so that you can put a zero. And and to be fair, you could always put a right. dollar. There was never For a requirement sure. that you yes. put any percentage there. So that that never happened. Right. But you had to at least put a dollar. They've changed that to that you can now put zero. But I think the argument is that's not sufficient because there's still listings that show Right. I don't know, whatever percentage for buyer's agent compensation, and now you've got listings that show a dollar or zero, that's still unfair. If you pull compensation completely out of MLS, are all the listings now on an even yes. playing field and maybe negotiating uh, directly is a little bit more um, clear for the buyers and sellers? So the way you kind of explained it in the class that you taught was that you thought maybe the goal was to uncouple that commission right. structure. Yes. It, it, the goal is to decouple the commissions. The Department of Justice has wanted that. I think that's a pretty common theme. And honestly, it's what we do in commercial real estate. Yeah. You know, in, when you're buying or selling commercial real estate, there's not really the same sort of MLS structure Correct. that you see on the there residential side. <laughs> yeah, there's not there's really not one, one at all. all. <laughs> and you know, m maybe there might be some expectation, uh, you know, generally speaking in, in different areas, Dallas, Fort Worth, for example, or Austin, whatever it might be, but there isn't a place where all the properties are listed and the compensation is, is listed, and that's part of the negotiation. Correct. So you're making an offer of $50 million to buy a building, then you include the what compensation you're requesting. So it's not something that we haven't done, that we're not right. already doing the or hasn't industry, been done before. That's exactly. right. That's right. We know how to do that.
So give us kind of the highlights of this trial. Well, I think that the plaintiffs put on. Jenna. Yes. That's a great question. Let's wrap up this one. Okay. It was just now 10 minutes. Oh, perfect. Let's okay. Let's that into the second. Okay. That's a perfect, perfect. next episode. Um, where did we end? Just so I can wrap up from. We ended right with you at um, basically explaining MLS. Okay. What this is all about. Perfect. Like, yeah. This explaining what. So I can say like. Things, now that, now that we've level set, this is a great time. Hi, Annie. Thing. Thank you. Hi, Karen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would, I would just say we got the basics of what this is all about. Perfect. Now. So now we can wrap this up and get into the nitty gritty. Love it. Y'all, I feel like this is a great spot to understand that we kind of understand. Bleh, let me start. Let me. Take your time. Don't use that. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> the blooper reel. Blah. Blooper reel. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is a great point to pause on now that we are all on the same page about what this lawsuit is about. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming in today, Paula. Absolutely. And y'all stay tuned because next up you will see a more in-depth interview with Paula. And remember, like, follow, leave me a message, leave me a comment. I want to know all the things and I want you to feel like you could talk to me at any time. So thanks for listening today. This has been Come Home with Jenna. This is Jenna Sears, your favorite North Texas realtor.